third, and I've managed to drag a couple of guys out with me who are going to tell us a little bit about the game. So would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Greg Donovan. I was the producer in Saints Row the Third. I'm Scott Phillips. I'm the lead designer on Saints Row the Third. That's right. What was Angel thinking? I didn't really do much apart from create like total carnage, running people over and beating them up. So can you tell me what the actual storyline is? Sure, Saints Row the Third starts off where the Saints are in the top of their game. They're bona fide celebrities. They've licensed out their image to lunch boxes, tennis shoes. Even in the game, there's a Saints Row movie in the works. So you start off the game as, uh, at the top of your game, a real badass. And uh, you end up robbing a bank and unbeknownst to you, it's owned by the Syndicate. They're the main enemies in the gang in the game and the syndicate don't take too kindly to that and uh, that's where the initial conflict starts uh, and from there on, our, there on out it's the Saints versus uh, the syndicate and trying to figure out who's the baddest gang uh, in the world. Obviously Saints are the baddest gang. That's right. <laughs> there seems to be like a lot of customization in the game like even in the short preview that I played I visited a um, plastic surgeon so can you tell us about all the different ways to customize your character? Yeah, uh, customization is a staple feature of the franchise, and this time around it's uh, improved significantly. We've uh, given the players tools that make it easier to create any character they want, whether it be uh, male, female, there's six different voices. You can have green skin, silver skin. Um, it's uh, it pretty much a limitless combination. It's clothing articles, tattoos, uh, taunts and compliments. Um, we expect to see uh, anything from uh, facsimiles of uh, famous people to, uh, you know, uh, abominations we've never seen before. That all sounds good. I'm definitely going to make a female, you know, pink hair that likes hydro. So when I was playing as well, I could also see um, there was music. You could choose your own music. So you can tell us about the soundtracks in there. Have you got any really great music, like a bit of dubstep? Well, we, we think so. I'm, I'm monopolizing this. You want to take this yeah. one? Sure, yeah. The, the music we've got, uh, I think, around eight stations. Uh, with our, our development side, our, our focus uh, personally is on the 80s, or the, the mix station, which is kind of the 80s and 90s. So we've got things like Sublime, uh, Tone Loke is in there, uh, Talk Talk, uh, let's see, we've got Bonnie Tyler, which is uh, uh, I Need a Hero, which is, for me, like, when any time that comes on the radio, I'm, I, I love it. I got a chill in the back of my spine. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's hip-hop, there's classical, uh, there's interspersed with all that stuff is, you know, kind of uh, news updates on the things that you're doing in the city. So it's not just music, it's kind of interactive with what's going on in the world as well. That's pretty impressive. So can you tell me a little bit about, if I want to play with my friends, what can I do? I heard a little thing about um, a horde mode, is that true? Yeah, so Horde, uh, in the past on Saints Row 2, we had a, mo a mode called uh, Zombie Uprising. It was basically you versus uh, waves and waves of zombies. And so for Saints Row the Third, we kind of wanted to play a little differently with that. So we had a little fun with the name Horde, uh, as it was typically spelled. So now it's uh, W-H-O-R-E-D. And basically the whole mode is just kind of all of the weird things that we had in the campaign, but taken to a further level. So you're you're not just fighting strippers, you're fighting 20 foot tall strippers. You're not just fighting mascots that are little miniature cans, you're fighting, you know, one foot tall miniature cans and you have a giant dildo bat. So there's, there's it's just the weirdest stuff we could come up with and all the waves are different. So it's not just, you know, one person, then two people and then three people you're fighting. It's just completely different waves every single time. So you have a lot of fun and there's there's three maps with 30 waves each so there's a ton of content there if you're uh, if you're ever need a break from the campaign you can just jump into horde for some fun and co-op my ass come up with these things I mean like beating people up with a giant dildo is not what I imagine I can't imagine what the business meeting like that was about like yeah let's go get giant dildos I, I mean I, I'll let Scott contribute to this because he was a designer as well but the, I mean the important question is like why wouldn't you come up with gameplay design like that right 
Yeah, I mean, our, our, we have a lot of brainstorming meetings early on in the project, so it's all about just throwing out the, the best ideas we have, and there's, there's always great stuff. The only things that we uh, immediately say no to are stuff that's like patently offensive to a certain group. Uh, beyond that, we just kind of, we're equal opportunity offenders. We do everything against everyone and just have fun with it. Uh, so our meetings are, are really a blast. I wish I could work for them. And finally, when do I get my hands on this? When is the postman going to bring it to my door? Uh, Saints Row the Third ships uh, November 18th on PS3, PC, and 360. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. That was Saints Row the Third. It looks absolutely amazing and a little bit insane. All right, let's give that motherfucker what's coming to him.